Okay, in our last video, we ended with a discussion of the physiology of antidiuretic hormone. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit, of, I want to go right into the pathophysiology of that hormone, what can go wrong. So SIADH is um, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So what happens here is, for some reason, you know, maybe a pituitary adenoma, um, or it could be an ectopic foci um, somewhere. You know, a lot of times with um, there's certain kinds of cancers like lung cancers um, where we can actually have a tumor that is secreting proteins that mimic um, ADH. So we might have a tumor here in the pituitary gland that actually is secreting ADH. Or we may have a tumor somewhere else in the body. Uh, small cell cancers um, of the lung um, have a tendency to um, create a lot of proteins that can mimic uh, ADH and some other hormones. Okay, so in either scenario, what we end up is in a situation where we have too much antidiuretic hormone. So what's going to happen? Well, remember our little picture of the kidneys, and um, we had the uh, Bowman's capsule and the proximal convoluted tubules that can go down into the loop of Henle with a hairpin turn and then drains, you know, th through the uh, distal convoluted tubules into the collecting duct. All right, and then um, remember along this hairpin turn we get very highly concentrated, um, a very high osmolality because there's a very, very high concentration of sodium. So what we have are, we've got water pores that are usually closed, that in the presence of antidiuretic hormone, open up. And when they open up, then we get water pouring into this um, tissue with very high osmolarity gets pulled in because it has an osmolarity of about 1500. Now this can, you know, causes the urine to be very concentrated and decreases the urine output. So syndrome of inappropriate um, antidiuretic hormone is going to cause oliguria, right? because you're not going to be pr producing as much urine and the urine that you have is going to be very concentrated. But even worse, what happens is the body is preserving too much water. So you end up inside your bloodstream, you end up with too much water and too little sodium particles. So you end up with, you know, normal sodium is between, um, you know, 135 to 140 milli, uh, 145 milliequivalents. And what, you ha what happens with SIADH is this sodium level drops to 125, 120, it can get even lower down into the one teens. Of course, when that happens, you, you um, are at risk for um, for neurological changes because you end up with um, swelling of brain tissue, um, of you know in, increased size of, of uh, brain cells, and you end up with mental status changes and confusion. So, anyways, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone causes um, causes oliguria and causes water excess, which ends up being manifested as as hyponatremia. Okay, so we have effect, effect number one, effect number two, and then the third effect, because we have excess water in the body, we're going to end up with edema, pedal edema. Okay, so that is um, syndrome of inappropriate um, antidiuretic hormone in a nutshell. Now, diabetes insipidus is sort of the opposite of of um, SIADH. Now what happens with diabetes insipidus is usually caused by 
brain injury, but you know something happens where the pituitary gets damaged. Actually, there's two different types. There is this first type where the pituitary gland gets damaged is called neurogenic. And what happens with neurogenic is we've done we something has damaged the pituitary gland. Um, it, this could be brain injury, you know, so I've seen this in patients that have really severe uh, brain injuries after motor vehicle accidents. Um, it can be tumor, or it, sometimes it could be ischemia, like a stroke. Okay, now the other type is something happens with the kidneys, and so the um, collecting ducts, the these water pores in the collecting ducts um, get damaged so they can no longer open or they may just not exist at all. So what happens is, you know, when ADH, there can be lots and lots of ADH in the system, but it's got nowhere to go here, right? So the, um, the uh, kidneys sort of lose their ability to concentrate urine. So whether it's, you know, so this would be called nephrogenic DI. And again, DI stands for diabetes insipidus. Um, so whether it's neurogenic and caused by a complete loss of a antidiuretic hormone or it's nephrogenic and it's caused by damage to the ADH um, receptor water pores in the kidneys, the effect is the same. What happens is we're not getting, um, you know, the urine is not being concentrated because these water pores are not opening up. So you end up producing huge quantities of um, of very dilute urine. And you know, I've seen brain injury patients that um, come into the um, into the ICU after a severe brain injury, and they can put out two to three liters of dilute urine. Per hour. Um, so that's what happens when you completely lose um, your ability to create um, antidiuretic hormone. Now this can be treated, um, so if this is a permanent um, condition, the pituitary has been damaged, we can treat this um, by giving synthetic, uh, a synthetic ADH, and the synthetic ADH is, um, is called desmopressin. And actually, um, vasopressin is actually another name for ADH. So both vasopressin and desmopressin can um, be given exogenously. They're very similar um, compounds. Um, desmopressin is available in, in an intranasal form. So most people with, um, with diabetes insipidus are given um, desmopressin and, and told to take a couple of, of uh, squirts in, in their nostrils each day and that will provide the ADH that they need to prevent, um, to prevent this massive diuresis. So obviously the effects of um, anti of diabetes insipidus, which is a loss of antidiuretic hormone, is massive diuresis. And you can imagine, you know, this can very quickly lead to, to life-threatening dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Okay, so this needs to be treated. If you have a patient that's putting out two to three hour, uh, two to three liters of urine per hour, you're going to end up with a patient that's hypotensive very quickly and has electrolyte abnormalities. So this needs to be corrected quickly. Now in the ICU setting, you can actually give um, doses of vasopressin or you can just give um, doses of desmopressin. Either one will work um, physiologically. Desmopressin tends to be the preferred uh, medication because it's sort of the easiest to titrate for this um, syndrome.